All right, go math, we're into unit two. So we're gonna be starting talking about some fractions and decimals. So one of the things that uh, we're gonna get started with here is basically how do we take a fraction and turn it into a decimal? How do we take a decimal and turn it into a fraction? Well, the one thing that we need to remember <clears throat> is that every fraction is a decimal because every fraction is already a division problem. So if I had something, for example, like one, Four. This is one out of four. This can also be a ratio, but we're going to look at it as a fraction. So one fourth, if I want to turn it into a decimal, I have to realize that this is one still divided by four. And that's one of the ways that uh, I can also use remainders in my division problem, right? So this is one still divided by four. In other words, this right here in a fraction is essentially a division problem but the division sign has been replaced by numbers. So you can think of it that way. So every fraction is just a division where the numbers have been interjected instead of the dots. So we have one divided by four. So if I take my fraction and I turn it into a division problem. So now uh, when we were doing the last unit, a lot of you said, well, you can't do that because you can't take four out of one. I can, I'm just gonna have a really small number. How I go about that is I put a decimal in. Now remember, I can put as many zeros back here as I want after the decimal. It doesn't matter. Or before the one. It doesn't matter because it's not going to change the value of my one at all. I enter another zero in there. Now I really have four into ten. Well, it goes zero times into one, and that's important. I need to put that zero there so that I can move my decimal up, and I know that zero whole numbers are made here. So now I get four into ten. That's going to go two times. That gives me eight. I'm left with two, now let's add another zero. I can add zeros over here all day long, and I don't need to because I'm about to run out. Four goes into 20, five times, double check my work here, and I get one fourth, which is equal to 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Now, 25 hundredths could also be solved by taking this and turning it into hundredths. So how do I make a fourth into 100? Well, the answer is I would multiply four by 25, and that takes me to 100. The, the deal with fractions, whether I'm finding um, common denominators or anything like that, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I multiply the bottom by 25, I have to multiply the top by 25, and I get 25, as soon as my hand works here, 25 hundredths. Now look at this fraction, so I have one fourth which is the same as 25 out of 100. Think of quarters in a dollar, right? That's one quarter out of a dollar. 25 hundredths, when written as a decimal, is 25 hundredths over here. So, when you're turning a fraction into a decimal, you take this fraction and you can either turn it into a division problem, because every fraction is a division problem, or you can flip it into an equivalent fraction that you know the answer in uh, decimal form for. Now, if I wanted to flip that, and I wanted to say, well, let's say I had um, 24 hundredths, and I wanted to make it into a fraction. Well, just like we did last time, remember, one out of four can be turned into 25 out of 100. This is 24 hundredths. When I say that out loud, I realize that something else is 24 hundredths, and that's 24 out of 100. 24 hundredths, 24 hundredths. This is why it's important we don't refer to our decimals as 0 0.24. It's 24 hundredths, it's 25 thousandths, because that immediately translates over into a fraction for us. So now what I need to do is find it in simplest form, and this goes back to unit one, where I need to find the greatest common factor of 24 and 100, something that I can keep dividing into. And what if I don't know that offhand, right? I do know that they're even, so I can keep simplifying. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this and I can say, well, I know that 4 can divide into both of them. Maybe I would do 2 to start and then realize they're even again. So I could do 2 again, I could do 2 again, I could do 2 again. But I'm going to divide this by 4. Whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. It doesn't matter. 24 divided by 4 is going to give me 6. 100 divided by 4 is 25. Now, do I have a greatest common factor of 6 and 25? When I'm thinking about it, the factors of 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6 don't translate to 25. So this is the simplest form in fractions of 24 hundredths. So again, 
I take 24 hundredths and I can turn it into 24 over 100 and then into 6 25ths by simplifying using greatest common fraction. So what does that look like? In a word problem, it might look something like this. The African pygmy hedgehog is a popular pet in North America. The average African pygmy hedgehog weighs between 5 tenths of a pound and 1 and 25 hundredths pounds. How can these weights be written as fractions or mixed numbers? So mixed numbers, again, is a whole number with a fraction attached. So if I'm looking at fractions or mixed numbers, I take my 5 tenths and I realize when I say that out loud, 5 tenths, 5 tenths, it translates right into a fraction. Okay, so I move into 5 tenths and I know something about 5 and 10. They share a common factor. They can both be simplified by 5, which gets me 1 half. So 5 tenths written as a fraction in simplest form is 1 half. If I had 1 and 20, whoops, 1 and 25 hundredths, it's 1 and 25 hundredths. My decimal, excuse me, is my fraction over here, 25 hundredths. So in that case, I would keep the 1. That's going to go over here, and I'm simplifying that 25 hundredths. And I know 25 and 100 are the greatest common factor of 25 themselves, because I know something about quarters and dollars. They're evenly split. So 25 divided by 25 gets me 1, and 100 divided by 25 gets me 4. So 5 tenths, or 1 half is commonly referred to as 0.5, because that's one that most people know can translate in, into 1 half as a fraction. If I have 1 and 25 hundredths over here, I write it as 1 whole and 25 over 100, 25 hundredths. From there, I can simplify, and I found the greatest common factor is 25. If I didn't know that, I could simplify by 5, and then I would get 5 twentieths, and I would know I could simplify by 5 again. And I come down to 1 and 1 fourth. So, again, moving between decimal and fraction, it's really important that we start calling our decimals by their proper names, and that way we'll know how to translate them right into a fraction, which may need to be simplified later. And every fraction is a division problem. So again, a fraction is just a division sign where the numbers have been replaced with dots.